Welcome back, you sexy bunch of people. MBR here, your main number one man from Helix Gaming Studio, going to bring you a look at AirMac. Now, what is AirMac, I hear you asking? Well, this video is going to cover exactly what it is and what you do on it, how to play it, anything involved around AirMac, I'm going to try and cover in this video. So sit back, get some popcorn, chill out with Michael Jackson for the next 10 minutes, and everything's going to be a happy day. So what is AirMac? Well, AirMac is a free-to-play game currently out on Steam. It's been on there for the last two years. It came out around November 2012. Currently still in beta. I only found out about this game about a week ago through a friend. Never heard it before, so I assume there hasn't been much promotions done with it. And like I said, it has been in beta for the last two years. When it's going to come out of beta, I'm not too sure. I have noticed some things where it's not fully polished yet, but that doesn't take anything away from the gameplay experience that I've had on this game. For me, AirMac falls into the category of a true action RTS, aka real-time strategy for all you noobs out there. So the idea is that you have this one unit, which is the AirMac, which you can currently see flying around at the moment. And this is called a Helix. The, so you basically, I fly around and you can see here, when I build units, I go to these bases which are scattered around the map, and from there I can pick up the units, I can deploy them anywhere I want on the battlefield, I can also order them to attack, I can order them to capture bases, and so on. So everything I do pretty much revolves around this air mech. On the bottom left of the screen, or at the bottom sort of center of the screen, you can see there are a load of upgrades. I can upgrade my abilities. I have certain abilities. For example, on this class, if I use the right trigger on the mouse button, I will shoot out rockets which use some of my energy up. There's also a couple of other abilities which allows me to have more weapons, so I can shoot more missiles upgrade my units so that they come a little bit stronger to make myself tankier and so forth. So there's nine different classes on the game, all which have different abilities and different ways the actual class works. So for example, the Helix, which I'm playing on at the moment, is my favorite class, as from level one, I'm able to carry two tanks in my Emic, which I think is OP, and it uses, doesn't use much energy to fly them around. As you can see, when I'm flying around with tanks in me, it does use up energy. The idea is that you can't just rush straight down to their base to drop it down. So there's nine different classes that are available to play. And the first one you have called as a Striker. This is the actual air mech which you start off with and then to unlock them you have to use in-game currency you get through playing games, losing games, whatever you where you win. If you win games you can get more um, in-game currency and also you can get boost which allows you to get more and so on. But you have the striker, the helix, the bomber, the warthog, sorcerer, osprey, neo, paladin and angel. So with that all in mind now, I want to talk about the gameplay and how AirMac actually works. So you start off the game with just your AirMac alone, no units, and you have the option, you start off about 20k and you have the option to go for a couple of air grades. I generally go down the tank route, and after 20 seconds you're then able to start playing. And in the map when you start the game, you'll be able to see as we progress through this game, there was a couple of neutral zones, and the neutral zones are grey. And they have units in, but these units are controlled by the AI, they don't move, but they will attack you. You can see there, there's a grey tank there, so that's an AI unit. The base which I captured in the middle, which is to the left of me and the right there, that blue base was originally a neutral base, and basically the idea is you and your opponent can go over to that base and attack it, but the AI defends it, and it takes a little bit, you know, you will need to get a couple of tanks to get through it. And it's obviously, you have some people build the strategy up that they let you take it so I would, I would start taking it and they would build up an army and when they see I'm about to get it they then come over and get all their units and try and take it for themselves so once you capture that base there's, depending on what map you are there's a couple other neutral bases along the side but once you capture the neutral base you then can start going onto your enemy's base you can see there I just flew past one of them it would be a red base or blue if they're on the other side whichever way it works but the idea is I always go to this base and I keep building units trying to deploy them picking them up bringing them over, picking them up, bringing them over, obviously you can set them to attack, but I prefer doing it this way, I can drag them to where I want them and put them in, you can see the dude's there trying to defend me from taking it, he's like, oh no, you can have my base, and I'm like, I want your base, and I keep flying away, picking up units, it's important to keep buying units and buying units, you know, you don't want to have gold just sat there, you want to be continuously attacking, and if you're pretty good at the game, which I'm not at that point, you could be flanking from both sides, you can be attacking his left base and his right base at the same time, so the idea is basically to capture these bases, when you capture the base, you'll be generating more income than your opponent. You can also get something called a money maker where you can put on certain slots. So you can see there's a little slot there where you can put a money maker, which means that base will be generating even more money. The more money you make, means the more units you can make. And if you can be making more units than your opponent, 
and well, generally, if you're if you're actually good and you're not really bad, then you're going to win. But it depends on how good your sort of unit calculation is. It's quite a skillful game. You've got to put your units in the sun, you know the right place. You know you can't just drop them. If I was to say just drop two units into his base, they would instantly get destroyed. So that's why you can see I build a load of units on the outside and then I start bringing them in two at a time or three at a time, depending on how many I can carry, and you know trying to affect um, trying to affect him in that sense. So once you've captured all the outposts, say if you capture every outpost via his main base, after 30 seconds of doing this, you'll then enter a mode where you'll be called dominating. And if your opponent for the next 30 seconds does not capture or neutralize one of the bases that you've taken, then your opponent will actually lose HP. So you won't even have to attack his main base, he will just eventually die unless he can't capture one of these outposts. Which is quite a nice way, because they could be turtling really hard and eventually you know, they're going to die because you've taken all this time to own the map and you know, take the map and make it your own anyway. But the other route to go down is you could just go straight out attack their main central base. You could do it from level 1, obviously doing this you wouldn't really have any units there and they would be able to deploy units a lot quicker because you'd have to travel to one of your outposts whilst they would be deploying units there. And Also the fact that they could be battling you and then they can go onto their base and they heal up. So not really a smart strategy but some people you can see will actually just build a shitload of units that you take the outpost and then they just come like boom because they're I hope that you've lost a lot to the AI. You can see here he's going for a big attack in my central base, but I'm well prepared for it. Got a load of my buster tanks around and we're able to defend us easily. So that's pretty much the general gist of the game. You have two ways of playing it. You can either fly around or you can go on the ground. So if you want to attack something on the ground, you have to be on the ground, whilst if you want to attack something in the air, for example, I want to kill him, I have to be in the air to do this. But there are certain classes, certain different air mix, which I mentioned about them earlier, that can actually, one can attack ground and air units whilst being in the air or being on the ground but through doing this it uses his energy bar you can see above where it says Mr. Big Russ above my helicopter I have some a load of green bars that's my HP and underneath that's my energy or mana whatever way you want to call it and when if you say this class had no energy then he would no longer be able to shoot them and he's got to go back to one of the bases to refill so that covers pretty much all you need to know about the gameplay. I've got a lot of live gameplays that I have recorded with myself and also playing with my buddy George which will be coming up on the Helix Gaming channel very soon. I'll create a playlist and the link of the playlist will be in the description below so you can check that out. There's going to be a lot of Airmec gameplay coming up on the channel. I'm really loving it and I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy it too. I say it's free to play so you can't go wrong. What I want to talk about now is the way the actual pay to play system or pay to win but there isn't a pay to win system in here. So the idea is when you play a game you earn in-game currency called kudos this will allow you to be able to buy new units. There's a lot of units, there's about a hundred units you can select from. You can only use eight in game, but you earn in game currency and allow you to buy new units. You can buy new air mechs, so you can buy, say, the the Viper or the I just made the Viper up. You can buy, say, the Bomber or something. You can buy that class. You don't need to spend real money to actually buy one of these classes. So if you want to build new, buy new units, you want to buy a new air mech, you can also buy pilot so in the left hand side of the screen you can see I've got like a next to my name there's a Frankenstein image this is a special like Halloween edition they brung him out I guess just for Halloween I thought he was really cool cost me like 4,000 in-game currency coins but totally worth it because he looks bad man but each pilot has additional stats so for this stat I'm not sure what he gives me but say he gives me 5% movement speed but I lose 2% respawn time there's all different pilots and it depends you know what kind of needs you want on top of that you can also buy parts for your plane or your air mech and these parts all can be bought again with in-game currency which is really cool the only things that you have to use real money for are sort of cosmetics really you know so it's not a pay to, waste, pay to win system you can actually buy the game for $12.99 like I did and through doing this it unlocks all the characters um, or all the air mechs and all the units you don't need to do it this way you can completely unlock them and it take a little bit of time to do it but you know that's the generally way you do games this way I've done League of Legends you unlocked all the characters through just playing games and playing games but I was really drunk and you know as it was free to play I don't mind investing £12 because it got me a load of diamonds as well which I talk about what they do but you know I'm happy with that and I got this little skin here for my helix it's not the greatest skin ever but it was a skin that came through buying it and it helps the developers out which you know I'm happy doing that so the only thing you need to use real money for is to buy diamonds so basically diamonds is the 
currency version of your money basically so kudos is in-game currency you earn through playing the game and there's also loads of rewards you get which is really cool they have a nice reward system on here which I'll talk about in a minute but basically you put money on and then you get diamonds and with these diamonds you can only buy cosmetics you could you can buy skins for your champion or air mech whatever way you want to look at him so there's at the moment I'm currently using a skin but as I say that I got this for free because I bought it well I didn't get it for free but because I bought the edition of the game it come with it but there's loads of cool skins that you can get some really nice ones what make it really look colorful there's about six for each character at the moment there's a guy who you can play what is a UFO and you can get like a pumpkin skin he just turns into a big pumpkin which I think looks really cool also you can get things that follow you around at the moment it doesn't seem to have equipped them for this game but I have a you can have three pets per game and basically these pets don't do anything but they just kind of look cool I have uh, two pets one's a vinyl CD and one's a skeleton head and when I land on the floor I actually wear the skeleton head instead of following me around for some reason they weren't selected for this game but I didn't actually buy them but somehow I unlock them not sure if it was through me purchasing the game or if I just unlocked them through my game time which is pretty cool so you know you can get you do unlock stuff like that through just playing so you don't have to actually you don't have to put any money on here and the money you do any you know like it's just like League of Legends with the way the skin system works which I really like that way it's a good way to make the game because there's nothing worse than people you know who pay to win and there's certain games um, I'm not really going to name any at the moment but the, you know there's games where you have to put or you don't have to put money on but certainly put a money on especially like iPhone games which put you at a bigger advantage than what your opponent does but here it just makes you look cooler and you know a lot of people if someone enjoys the game you know I've spent a lot of money on League of Legends because I think it's a fair system I want to put money on it because I just want to look cooler and the same goes for here if I want to have a cooler champion you can get your units to look cooler some units you can get different versions of them I think there's some Halloween ones so your t your tank will look like a pumpkin I'm not so sure about that but you, know, you sort of get the idea behind that and you can also get cosmetics where when you're flying through the air instead of I don't know if anything follows I think you get a little bit no oh, behind me with a phone you don't like you get some like smoke following behind you like or some bats a load of bats are follow behind you and stuff like that which is just cool it's just you know it doesn't affect the game whatsoever but it just makes you look cooler and people will like that and I certainly like that system I think it's really cool and it's a good system they have got going on here what I want to also talk about now is the rewards I was mentioning that about earlier the reward system basically works. There's all this loads of rewards. So say if you win ten online matches, they reward you for being an active player. So I got a load of points for coming on for like two days in a row and stuff like that. And through that you earn kudos, and you also can earn diamonds through that way. But I believe that the only way to access that you can, so you could get enough diamonds through the rewards. It would take a while to get yourself a skin, but I think the only way to unlock those diamonds is actually by putting money on in the game in the first place, and then you can constantly get those diamonds. But they do have a real good deal going on for like nine dollars for nine ninety nine dollars um, you can get fifty dollars worth of crystals which I think it's a first time sort of player reward thing for saying you know thank you for putting money onto the game which I think is completely fair it's such a, it is a really good deal and it's something that I'm thinking about doing myself because I don't think it actually affects my startup power bundle which I bought otherwise I'd be a bit of a shame because you know it's a really good deal they have put there so I, I can't explain how fair the system that Airmec has got us in place it's a really good job and credit to the developers for making it like that so along with the 1v1 battle that I'm currently doing at the moment, a cool thing they've added into the game is you can play with your friends, do 2v2s and 3v3s. I'm not sure if they would be expanding on that, but I love the idea that you and your buddy can be in a 2v2 going against two other complete noobs. Because, well, no one's going to be better than me and my friend. Probably my friend will be a noob too, because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm Mr. Big Russ, the pro master. But I love the fact that, you know, you can do 2v2s. The, the other day, me and I had two of my other friends on, so we were doing 3v3s freeze it's really cool along with obviously the 1v1 arena system so I think I pretty much covered everything you need to know for this game now we've got about six minutes left of footage so we'll try and see what's going on in the gameplay and I'll describe what's going on so at the moment I'm building a load of longhorns I'm currently level 12 in the game so the game's going on for almost 40 minutes now I've captured the majority of the bases you can see I'm just trying to capture this one in the bottom right hand corner but he's giving me some he's giving me a bit of a tough time because obviously the closer or the I've now kept these. This was one of his bases originally. It wasn't an AI controlled base, so because of this, it does mean that I'm moving closer to him, so he's going to be able to get units quicker than I am until I actually capture it. As it's neutralized at the moment, once I actually capture it, it will mean that I can start bringing my own units, or I can capture 
take my units from there, but as it's neutral at the moment, I'm, I have to keep flying backwards and forwards and taking units from one of these bases, which obviously does slow things down a little bit. And you could hear, if you heard the sound effect there, it said godlike, and that's why I was mentioning earlier. I really love it. it has the Unreal Tournament free sort of texture to it, where you, if you get like a head, if you kill someone with a headshot, like headshot, killing spree, godlike, and yeah, I really love stuff like that. Sometimes it bugs out and doesn't always work, but I love the idea they've added something in into it like that you feel a lot more rewarded to you know when you say if you're on League of Legends and it's like Mr. Big Russ on a killer spree stuff like that just pumps you up even more and that's what I just love about this game the, the, the voice is so cool it's just it reminds me a lot of Unreal Tournament 3 and that was one of my, it was one of my games what really got me into gaming so we're pushing onto his base now destroying all his money makers you can see we've flown past somewhere I think I'm just about to pick one up I've got these big ass tanks called the Devastators. Currently flying with one now. I can't carry anything else with it. You can only build one at a time. They take 30 seconds to build. But when you do see it, they are devastating. That's where they get their name from. They're massive and do a shitload of damage to your opponent's base and whatever you put against them. And they take a while to kill. You can see there. Look at look at the side. He's kind of hidden in between the tree, but he's pretty badass. So once we capture this base, I think they've neutralized that one down in the bottom right hand corner, or I never actually was able to secure it. Not sure what happened with that. We might be. Able, we have captured this one left. We'll go see what we're up to. We're getting a devastator. Where are we can put the bad boy. We're putting them on guard. So the thing is, you, at some point you want to just collectively build your units up instead of trying to say. Obviously, I've taken a lot of his outposts, but you don't want to just drop it, all your units straight into his base because you might you know, be outnumbered. So I like to build a bit of an army at first and then start going in. Obviously, depending on how well they're doing. You know, if you've taken a lot of their outposts, outbases, you know, you might really be starving their economy, which is going to be nice. And you can see I'm able to keep spamming Buster Tanks because I have such a good economy with owning all these bases. He has actually captured this one back, but we've got a Devastator there, and their base is going to be devastated, excuse the pun. So you can see there, dude, he's trying to stop me, but there's not much he can do, and we do have a load of foot soldiers coming in now, and it's about to capture it. And there was what I was mentioning earlier about dominating. So just above the mini-map, we've got 20 seconds until I start dominating, and as we he was just killed by a tank, he's not going to be able to do anything. So after those 15 seconds, or well, the 30 seconds in total has been counted down, he will just start instantly losing HP. So all I have to do is make sure he doesn't capture one of those bases, and you know I, I win the game without even having to attack his main base. But what I could do on top is I could also start attacking his main base now. As you can see, I'm putting all my units in, and he's going to be taking a lot of damage through just the fact that I'm dominating, but also the fact that you know I've got a shitload of devastators there on this base as well. You can see we've got a load of tanks, we're killing any units he instantly builds is just getting destroyed and there's not really much he can do in this situation now. This is the good feeling where you get all your tanks, you're like, come on boy, there's nothing there's nothing he can do whatsoever now. But like I say, I've got a lot of live gameplays that are going to be coming up on this channel following this video. So if you want to see some actual live gameplay where I'm chatting about it live, you know, discussing what I'm building and whatnot, then those videos are going to be for you. The link for the playlist will be in the description. I'm sure I will make sure that I can make an outro at the end which features to that playlist. But there's my skirmish victory. GG, Mr. Vigras. Get get some candy. I get unlock some candy there. Nothing special, but a bit of candy. It's pretty cool. And you can see there it tells me how much experience I gain and kudos. So as I got boost because I got like a 30 day free boost because I bought the game and yeah it was a good job and didn't die drawing that but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed if you want to see more Air Mac, please let me know take it easy have a great day peace